in our lectures now today let me before i start let me talk about the various topics which have been covered so you can see this in your screen okay fine now you see instead of writing down the various topics according to the lectures taken i have uh, categorize this as per the topic so basically we have covered three topics in 12 lectures and these are the three main topics the first topic is general characteristics of radiation detectors there we started with the discussion of a simplified radiation detector model and then we talked quite there was a detailed discussion on the current and pulse modes of operation most importantly we spent more time on the pulse mode of operation because this is what we normally use in gamma ray and charged particle spectroscopy then afterwards i told you about the practical advanced practical where we perform the gamma spectroscopy of or we basically obtain the spectrum of cobalt 60 and 137 cesium source using a sodium iodide thallium activated detector and single channel analyzer and what you observe in the spectrum what are the various artifacts and what is the reason so we talked about the full energy peak background and this basically what you are observing in the spectrum which gives you information about the gamma ray energy or other background processes we are basically observing the pulse height spectra and we talked about it in quite detail afterwards continuing we talked about the various possibilities of backgrounds so compton background then escaping events so you can expect a single escaping double escaping and this we discussed under this topic of uh, understanding the interaction of gamma ray with a detector and i i did not give you any notes i think on this topic but there was a very detailed discussion about it and uh, then we talked about the very important property, which is one of the most important properties in nuclear spectroscopy, and that is energy resolution. What do you mean by full width at half maxima and also the Fano factor? After that, we talked about total and full energy peak efficiency. And then the two important types of efficiencies. One is absolute and another is intrinsic. We can also have relative efficiency as well. There was a discussion on it. And so after spending this time in our first two lectures, on the next two lectures, we concentrated on nuclear instrumentation. Again, this year, since we are having an online class, and I, I do not have the opportunity to see you in person in the classroom. So I have curtailed this nuclear instrumentation part because this is one of the hardest part to understand. And uh, in online class, it becomes very difficult. That's why I have uh, skipped out a lot of details and only talked about the basic electronic system accounting system for estimating for energy spectroscopy and then there was a very detailed discussion on what a pulse type counter should be what are the requirements what do we expect from a pulse type counter and then i talked about that uh, just after the detector immediately close to it lies the preamplifier and what was the importance of the preamplifier 
the impedance matching criteria and also getting rid of some of the noises these were discussed and followed by the we talked about the importance of pulse shaping we cannot spend the whole day or a lot of time analyzing a single pulse at the cost of other important pulses right and so what we do require is the shaping of these pulses and we talked about very basic ideas about shaping circuits and then i talked about the linear amplifier i talked about the peak overshoot undershoot and how do you, the signal how do you see them as they come out of the preamplifier and then afterwards from the amplifier how does the signal look like we talked about them and then afterwards there was a discussion on the discriminators two very important discriminators the single channel analyzer and the multi channel analyzer well in the third from the third and from the third lecture onwards we spent time on the various detectors again this year uh, we are skipping out a lot of other possibilities because it is taking a long time even to understand a very simple detector which takes lot lesser time and also much better way you can understand it in the classroom but i have tried my best and i have spent here most of the time teaching you about the classification and desirable characteristics because normally you don't uh, deal with these topics you just go on starting with semiconductor detectors gaseous detector and blah and blah but i have tried to tell you about the philosophy of the operation and the basic idea behind choosing of the detectors the dynamic range scenario the timing resolution and all that stuff we discussed there was a lot of discussions and i also talked to you through examples in this matter then we talked about the dead time and resolving time followed by the double source method for determination of resolving time after that we discussed five numerical problems to give you a flavor about how the basic detector physics and the resolving time you can understand them then there was a very short discussion on the semiconductor details i have curtailed my discussion mainly to the spectroscopy part in this matter after that we started talking about gamma ray spectroscopy that means we will extract information from gamma rays which are emitted by radioactive nuclei and so we need to have good energy resolution timing resolution and other things i talked again i discussed about the various artifacts of a gamma spectrum and then today i will discuss this part i did not covered in my previous classes so i will cover this two important topics today which is uh, the response functions for small intermediate and very large detectors in gamma spectroscopy and also i'll talk about the various complications which are experimentally observed in the response of these gamma detectors and followed by a discussion or understanding through three problems so this is these three topics these these topics will be covered today anyway so following our discussion we talked about in the last uh, lecture i talked about the various timing what do you mean by timing detectors time resolution what is the importance of the detector size and all that we also discussed about a very basic coincidence measurement setup 
Previously, I have already talked to you about the escape suppressed detector, where already the coincidence condition is being used, right? And uh, we have already also talked about regarding uh, now moving forward in this coincidence scenario, we can have more than two detectors which are in coincidence with each other and we call them generally array. Now we talked about the various requirements for high resolution gamma ray spectroscopy and what a gamma array should have. There was a detailed discussion on that. And then also we talked about what are the various factors which affect the performance of the gamma array. Today, I also intend to talk about this very important technique, the time of flight technique. I'll talk about it just a little bit from now. And then the, in our previous classes, apart from gamma detectors, we talked about how to detect slow and fast neutrons, along with a detailed discussion on both the electromagnetic and hadronic calorimeters. So this is what, including today's lectures, so this is what we have been covering in our first 12 lectures of the syllabus. Okay.